Hello, in this video we will cover the basic definition of economics and the various concepts that these with this field. First, the word economics comes from Greek and it means manage the house accounts. Nowadays, economics, it's the study of how individuals and societies choose to use the scarce resources that nature and previous generations have provided. In this definition, the key word that we're having is scarce resources. Resources are scarce due to the limited space of Earth. This is first. On the other side, you're having the unlimited desire of the human being. So this is the nature of a human being with his unlimited desire. And since we're having unlimited desire from one side and limited space and resources from the other side, so this is why we're having scarce resources and we have to make a choice. Economics is a social science concerned with the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. Three fundamental concepts in economics. The first one, it's the opportunity cost. It's defined as the best alternative we forego when we make a choice or decision. For example, if I'm having the option to go to assist to a class in the university at the same time i can go to work as a waiter or waitress in a certain restaurant and i will get paid in one hour five dollars so if i choose to come to the university okay for one hour what i will forego it's the five dollars these five dollars they represent my opportunity cost because i made the decision to come to the university the second concept we're having it's marginalism. It's the process of analyzing the additional cost or benefit arising from choice or decision. It means if I want to produce an additional unit, okay, I have to check for the additional revenue or the additional cost I can uh, have. So marginalism, whenever we're talking about marginalism, we're talking about the additional, whether it's revenue or it's cost. Then we're having the efficient market. Efficient market, it's a market in which profit opportunities are eliminated instantaneously. It means we don't have the time to think about it. Someone will grab the opportunity and will start to produce. Like this, also we can say about the efficient market, that's the market where the resources, the minimum resources, they are producing the maximum output like this, we can say we're having an efficient market. Economics could be divided into two main branches. First, micro and macroeconomics. Microeconomics, it's the branch of economics that examines the functioning of individual industries and the behavior of individual decision-making units, that's firms and households. When we're talking about the demand of a certain household, it's something related to microeconomics. When we're talking about the production of a certain firm, it's related to microeconomics. Macroeconomics, on the other hand, it's the branch of economics that examines the economic behavior of aggregate, it means the group, okay, aggregate income, employment, output, and so on, on a national scale or could be on international scale. For example, if we're talking about the unemployment rate in a certain country, this is macroeconomics. If we're talking about the GDP, the gross domestic product in a certain country, okay, this is macroeconomics as well. We're having also positive economics and normative economics. Positive economics, it's an approach to economics that seeks to understand behavior and the operation of systems without making judgment. It describes what exists and how it works. It means here we are describing for example, if we want to, uh, to ask what's the impact of an increase in tax on consumption, it means here I'm not making any judgment, just I'm measuring okay, the impact on tax increase on consumption. Then we're having normative economics. It's an approach to economics that analyzes outcomes of economic behavior. It evaluates them as good or bad and may prescribe courses of action also called policy economics. One example could be, should the government subsidize higher education? Okay, should, so I'm using the term should. 
Or I can say an increase in tax may hurt the poor people in this country. So here I'm making a judgment. This is why it's called normative economics. Finally, in order to judge a policy, okay, we can judge it based on four criteria. The first one is efficiency. Whether this policy is producing what the people are asking okay, or what they want. The second criteria is equity or fairness. And here we are talking about the accessibility to resources. If all the people in this economy are being able to access the resources. Third, we're talking about growth. It means whether this policy is ensuring an increase in the output. And fourth and finally, we're talking and we can evaluate the policy based on stability, whether this economy is growing in a steady way with low inflation and full employment. Thank you for watching this video. We will have other videos later. If you're having any comment or question, please write it down in the comments. Thank you.